Hi guys, I hope you're all doing well. As you can see from the title, today's video is going to be five of my top tips for keeping a timeless wardrobe, which is something that I speak quite a lot on and I always kind of show the emphasis and talk about the emphasis of having timeless pieces that can be worn season upon season, year upon year, and if you've ever seen my styling videos before, you'll know that I quite often talk about how a lot of my items have been in my wardrobe for a long time and I only really invest in something if I personally feel like it's going to be around for a couple of years or if it's a trend that I think is going to incorporate really well into my life long term. And with that being said, I get asked quite often my tips for creating a timeless wardrobe. So I thought I would share them with you in this video and just talk through what I personally feel are really good tips to get you started. And I think we should start with saying that it's a good thing to know your personal style. So if you already know what you like, obviously you know that you maybe prefer oversized fits or you are more of a classic dresser or maybe you prefer wearing dresses and like ballet flats or maybe you're someone who just really likes wearing trainers it's good to know those core things that you really resonate with so a lot of the time online we see timeless wardrobes and capsule wardrobes where there's a big emphasis on it being like a certain type of piece and I think as much as that is a timeless capsule wardrobe that looks different for every person because I have friends who wear a lot of flowery dresses that would be a capsule item to them and a timeless piece however I don't personally wear stuff like that if you get what I'm saying. So what could be deemed as a timeless piece in my wardrobe might not be something that you deem to be a timeless piece in your own. And it's really important to kind of get a grasp on what your personal style is to know how your timeless wardrobe works for you. And that will be different for every single person. So one thing I would say is if you are struggling to find your style or you don't really know what your style is and you're in a bit of a transition, that's totally okay. It's normal to have style transitions in your life and to change the way that you like things to fit. Or maybe you like flowery dresses for six months and then you go off them again and then you go back onto them. It changes and that's okay because style always evolves. But if you are someone who is looking to really discover your style and work out what works for you. I would highly recommend hitting Pinterest seasonally as well, because this kind of works for different seasons, and maybe typing in like autumn winter outfit ideas, and then pin whatever it is that you think is an outfit that you like but would also wear, because it's really important when you're looking at these things to go for what you like, but also go for what you will wear, because I find sometimes, I do this and I know other people do too, but I'll like something on Pinterest or in a shop and I'll get it, and then I just don't know how to style it and then it never gets worn. So I might really like that style, but I just don't personally feel like I wear it enough. So just have a really good browser Pinterest, see what you end up pinning, then have a look in your wardrobe and see what you've already got that's maybe on those pins already. You can have a little look through and work out what it is that you really like that suits you and that kind of works really well together because you might be quite surprised that some of those outfits you can really easily recreate. Some of them you maybe need to buy and tweak a few pieces in your wardrobe, but for the most part, I think whatever you're pinning is typically the style that you already have. Maybe just a few other pieces here and there, but obviously you can weed that through because sometimes I pin stuff that I would maybe never wear, but I just think the outfit or the picture looks really cool. So I try and train myself to be like, okay, that's not an outfit I would wear, but I appreciate it. Tip number two would be to invest in quality pieces. And I'm not saying this in meaning that you need to go spend a fortune. You can get high quality pieces from some high street brands. It's just about investing in what you know will work in your wardrobe. So for example, I would consider an investment piece to be my And Other Stories t-shirts because I have black and I have two white ones. Those t-shirts are about 17 pounds, but the best quality t-shirts that I've got, I really like the fit of them, the quality is really great, they just feel really nice. I'll link them down below if you wanna check them out, but they are to me an investment piece because they're something that I've invested money in rather than spending like two, three quid, and they're something that will stay in my wardrobe for a really long time. Likewise, things like my vintage Burberry trench, I bought that for I think about two, 200 to 300 pounds, I can't remember exactly, a few years ago, and I got it tweaked, I got the buttons sewn back up so it looks really perfect condition, dry cleaned, etc. That is again a really good investment piece. However, you don't necessarily need to spend 300 pounds to get a good quality investment piece. There is so many gorgeous bits on the high street. If you're looking for like basic stuff, I would highly recommend checking out Uniqlo and Abercrombie. Both of those are places that I hit up quite often and Abercrombie is so incredible for the high quality basics at the moment. Everything they have is gorgeous. A lot of it is very timeless and they've got kind of trend pieces here and there dotted throughout as well, depending on your preference. But genuinely, such a great place to go, likewise with Uniqlo. I have a lot of pieces from both and I really like them. However, 
I also do have things from kind of H&M, Primark, etc., which are equally long lasting in my wardrobe. I've got knits from H&M that have been going for like six years now, still great condition, same with blazers, and I just think they are gonna be long lasting. So it's definitely worth the pieces that you want, making sure that you get high quality, not necessarily high price point, but a high quality item. So say for example, the white t-shirt, you want one that's not gonna be see-through because then you'll wear it more often. You won't feel the need to constantly be buying them because you don't need to replace it because it works for its purpose, if you know what I mean. Um, and it's also something that will probably last you a really long time without having to repurchase. So I definitely recommend focusing on the quality of the items. Some of the higher price points are sometimes better quality, but it's not always the case. Sometimes the high price points are just for the brand name and you actually don't get that much better quality. My next tip is to make sure that you go for a great color palette. So a classic color palette for a timeless wardrobe, I would say is your neutrals, your black, gray, white, your beige tones, all those things that can be really easily mixed and matched together and that aren't a very big trend piece. However, I would say this is very personal style dependent because you might really like styling a bright blue and that could fit really well into your wardrobe and you can mix and match it really easily. But again, colors can fit in and out of that really easily. I just think for your core statement pieces, sticking to that color palette is a really good thing to do because black, cream, white, gray, neutral tones, they all go with absolutely everything. So they're a really good like base to have. And then you can slot in the odd colored piece here and there that you know is gonna work really well. So for example, I've got a bright green tracksuit in my wardrobe and I tend to incorporate a few green tones because I just think they really suit my skin tone and I quite like wearing them. So yes, they are a very bright color, but they mix and match in really nicely with the rest of my wardrobe. So they get worn quite a lot, which is obviously a win for me because it means that they're being worn the most that I possibly can without having just like one outfit option which is also another point that i want to mention anything that i buy i always fixate on the fact that it needs to work in at least six outfits so if you've seen my waist to style series i always make outfit videos that are like six plus items because in my mind if i can make six outfits at least with one item, then it's something that's worth having because it means I can wear it a multitude of different ways, as opposed to having something that's maybe like a trend piece that I can only wear in one way or like a dress that only goes with one pair of shoes that I own so I don't wear it very often. It's a really good way to look at it to do that. So I guess it's kind of six tips. We'll go with six tips. <laughs> the next thing is to make sure that you think about the silhouettes and opt for a classic silhouette over a trend focused silhouette. And what do I mean by that? If you're going for, say for example, a top, if you're going for tops that are kind of like trend focused and you know there's the ones that like tie up at the back or they're backless etc they are more of a trend silhouette whereas something that's kind of a more rounded neck vest etc would be more of a classic silhouette so for example a trench coat is quite a classic silhouette but then you might have like a bomber jacket which is more of a trend focused silhouette does that make sense so obviously go with what works for you you might prefer a bomber jacket to a trench coat but think about the silhouettes of the pieces that you're buying and make sure that they are pieces that will grow with you, grow with your style and change into whatever you need them to work with. So for example, a trench coat is a really great piece because it goes with a multitude of different outfits. So even if your style was to change, it will go with whatever you need it to go with, whether that's a long floaty maxi dress, whether that's a skirt and some tights and a jumper, whether that's some baggy oversized jeans and t-shirt, there's a multitude of ways that you can style them and it's really important to make sure that you have like a core collection of classic silhouettes that work really well for everything. And the last thing is to limit the amount of trends that you buy into and focus more on having those great quality pieces. So what I tend to do is if there's a trend that I really like, say for example, ballet flats or denim maxi skirts, there's something that comes in and fades off quite often. So they come back in and out of style, which is a really good thing because it means that in years to come, I can still wear those pieces and they're not something that's like a one hit wonder that I'm gonna wear for like five minutes and then it's gonna be vanished off the face of the earth again. So it's really important to think about the trends that you're investing into, but also when you're shopping, what I sometimes do is like a wardrobe audit. So I'll go through and I'll pull out anything that I don't want anymore. I'll look at what's already in there. I'll make sure that things still fit because obviously sizes fluctuate, etc. And I'll just say to myself, okay, I know that I really want a brown long line coat and I'll look at what I've got and think, is this something that can fit in really easily? Will it go with everything? Is there anything I can take out to replace with this? Because I don't want to have this big overflowing wardrobe anymore. If you've seen my journey to a minimal life series, you know this already. I'm really trying to like 
basically cull my life and just get rid of anything that's not serving a purpose. So anything that goes into my wardrobe has to be something that can be styled a number of ways. It has to be something that's not necessarily a trend piece unless I know it's gonna be worn for my wardrobe year upon year, like a denim maxi skirt. Some people might wear it for five minutes and then not want it anymore. I would say that it's gonna be something that I'm probably wearing for a few years to come at least. And as long as I can justify wearing it for a few years, that to me is quite timeless because it means that it's really had a lifespan in my wardrobe and it's not just a one hit wonder. But really worth having a look at the trends and investing in ones that work for you. And just kind of working out, like I said, with the one in one out policy and making sure that you're really focusing on a curated wardrobe, things can be worn a multitude of ways. You know that it's stuff that's gonna suit you and fit you for a really long time. And it just keeps that wardrobe into the most timeless curated thing that you can possibly have. And I'm not gonna sit and tell you there's a limit on the amount of pieces you can have in your wardrobe. I think that's ridiculous. I think you can have as many or as little pieces as you want. I don't personally feel like a capsule wardrobe has to be like five items. I think it could be 30 items if you want it to be. It's whatever you deem to be the pieces that you pick out the most often. I quite like mixing up my style quite a lot. So I have quite a big wardrobe, but everything in there has a purpose and gets worn quite often. So I'm not gonna sit and tell you, you have to refine it down to 10 pieces, nor am I gonna sit and tell you a specific item that you need to have in your capsule. I just think it's personal preference and whatever works for you is great. Everyone's style is different. We can all change our style up if we want to. Style changes and you might add pieces in a few years time that maybe you didn't consider now, but it's all about what works for you and what works for your wardrobe. So hopefully that video helped guys. Hopefully you got some good tips from this and you can go back to your wardrobe and curate it and do what you need to do with it. Hopefully I've inspired you to kind of head in and just make a bit of a change in anything in there. Um, but if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, Hit the notification bell for more from me and I'll see you in my next video. But if you want to check out any of the ways to style, I'll leave all of my styling videos down below for you to check them out because I do styling every Tuesday. Thanks for watching, guys.